A technician at AT&T, Mark Klein, was one of the first to witness something. There was some speculation there's some kind of spying they're doing, having to do with the new era of fighting terrorism or something, but nobody knew. One day, an agent of the National Security Agency showed up to talk to one of Klein's supervisors. And I happened to answer the door. He comes in, he's wearing a business suit, looking very stern, not smiling at all. That's all I knew about it, and I thought I'd never hear about this ever again. But later, inside this AT&T facility, Klein noticed something unusual on the sixth floor. It's room 641A, says on the door. And what's mysterious about it is there's no door handle. So it looks kind of odd. Klein began to investigate. I traced the cabling coming out of the room. I could not find direct cabling going from the secret room to the phone switch. The cabling all seemed to go upstairs. Upstairs on the seventh floor was where AT&T handled internet traffic. What Mark Klein found was an infrastructure that suggested that the government was copying all traffic going through the AT&T internet backbone. Klein got hold of engineering drawings that showed the cables he had traced were going to a device called a splitter. The splitter is basically a glass prism. So you put a cable in there, the light beam goes in there and it's split like that. One half was going to the secret room, and the other half was going to its normal assigned destination. But it's been copied in the process. And this was important because if one can split the light or divert the light out of one of those networks, one can copy everyone's traffic on the network. It's kind of unfathomable amount of information. The internet chops everything up into little data packets. So it is your email, your web browsing, photos you might be sending. This is a huge dragnet operation.